You've made it this far to the last part of the Cardboard Gazelle project. At this point, your shoe should look like a, a shoe, but we've got some trim and finish work to do, so let's get to it. Let's do the sole trim. Make sure this long piece is rubbed, curved, and conditioned well. Apply a lot of glue to the inside. Now apply way, way more glue to the rough, corrugated edges of the sole. These things soak up glue like a sponge. You might need to apply one coat, let it dry, then apply a second coat of glue to the edge of the sole. Wait for the glue to get tacky, and then press the sole trim on the sole. Start with one end of the heel, slowly work your way to the front, then back around to the heel again. Once it's aligned with the bottom edge flush to the bottom edge of the sole, press it firmly in place as the glue is still setting. Let's do the heel trim next. After this is cut out, form it into yet another bowl-like shape by once again pressing it into your palm with your thumb. Be sure to curl the sharp edges of the heel trim inward. Once it's conditioned and bent into shape, dry fit the heel trim into place. It sits high on the shoe body's heel. Mark it with a pencil when you've positioned it high and centered on the heel. Use your pencil mark as a reference to apply glue to the shoe body heel and inside the heel trim. Let the glue get tacky. Now press the heel trim onto the shoe body heel. The heel pull is that little black round tree looking piece from my template. After it's cut out, bend and curl the top round back part backwards. You can even roll it around a pencil or a pen. Then make a C-shaped channel down the longer straight part by rubbing your thumbnail down the center of it. This will help it fit into the back of the heel. Before applying glue, dry fit the heel pole in place. The curl sits backwards just over the top of the heel. Mark it with a pencil where you want it to stay and use your marks as reference for where to apply glue. Apply glue to the back of the heel pole and inside the heel of the shoe body. Press the heel pole in place when the glue is tacky. Cutting out the side stripes is probably the hardest cutting part of this project. If you haven't done it already, do it now. And don't get frustrated. Be patient. My best advice is to develop a kind of stroke while cutting. Get your hand and arm into a rhythm of movement without thinking about it too much. With your six different side stripes all cut out, bend and curve each piece to fit to the side of the foot. Dry fit them in place to see how they fit. The smallest piece goes in front toward this toe. After it fits snug in place, you'll see how the other two fit in place behind it on each side of the foot with a little space between. They're snug between the lace and the sole trim pieces. Now apply glue to the back of all the stripes. When the glue is tacky, Press them in place, starting with the smallest of the three that go on each side of the foot. Now you can also glue the logo piece in place on the top front of the tongue. You should have cut the long lace pieces out by now. If not, do it now. You should have one long, very skinny strip of cardboard, about 48 inches or 1.2 meters long and a quarter inch or six centimeters wide. You may have to tape pieces together to get the length. I recommend looking for the longest continuous piece of cardboard from a flattened, broken down box that you can find. Even a medium sized box, when it's dismantled and flattened, will often yield a nice long section that you can cut a lace from. The lacing technique I'm going to show you is the old show style they did in the old shoe stores. Start like you're lacing any normal shoe. Find the center of your lace. Thread the two ends into the bottom two lace holes and make sure your lace is still centered. Then bring one lace up through the bottom of the next lace hole. Thread it over the top, down into the next hole directly across from it, and then leave it. Take the other part of the lace you were just ignoring, bring it up from the bottom, through the next unoccupied lace hole, out over the top of the shoe, and down into the next unoccupied lace hole directly across. Repeat the sequence as the laces leapfrog each other from underneath the lace trim and up the shoe. Well, I'm proud of you. Be proud of yourself. I can't see what you've done, but I feel it. I know how hard it is. I taught myself how to do this all by myself with zero instruction from anyone. Imagine how many times I've had to throw work away. 
uh, or recycle it, I should say. Some of you might even caught the mistake I made in this demo. I painted the tongue black and then repainted it all white. Mistakes, learning from mistakes, confidence building, it's all part of this project. As cool as your shoe may look in the ends, maybe the object isn't the objective here. Maybe, hopefully, your shoe is just a symbol of what you've learned along the way.